Hello, everyone. This is Mickey Moore. Welcome again to Run Life Today, uh, being your host and exciting to have another authentic and inspiring conversation today with some uh, someone that all of us probably know, especially in North Florida, um, but excited to be in season two. And this will be our episode three. Uh, as always, you can go to our website, runlifetoday.org for more episodes. Uh, like us, watch us, follow us, and subscribe, and all of that. But let's get back to our special guest. Uh, I'm going to say officially, Senator Loran Osley, for the first and only time during the interview. But um, I know her as a fellow triathlete. So, Loran, thank you for being here. Hello. Hello. Thank you for doing this, Mickey. Yeah, certainly. And uh, thank you for the time after hours, because I know you, you keep a busy schedule. But um, as we talked before we came on, you know, you, you've peaked at some of our, our episodes, so you kind of know what you're getting into here. And I want to jump right into it, because um, being around you for so many years now, uh, probably, I don't know, at least 20 uh, that I can remember, um, amazed at your ability to integrate so many lanes of work and life. Uh, but as we always do in the beginning, we, we want to dig on some background, right? So if you would, for the audience's benefit, a little bit about where you're from, you know, your upbringing, say, all the way through until you went to Randolph, Macon, William and Lee and all of that. But tell us a little bit about your upbringing first. Let's start there, Lorraine. So I'm, you know, feel blessed to have been in Tallahassee almost all of my life. And my family's been here. Um, my dad and his fat daughter, fa father before him. Um, we've been in this North Florida for a long time. Um, and I, uh, you know, I, I love all of North Florida and it's a you know privilege to be able to, to run and work here for almost all my life. Um, I, you know, I grew up you know, went through elementary school, went to, went to McClay, ended up going, graduating from Leon High School. None of that time did I run. I was a, I was a different type of athlete. I, I read horses um, and I, it was a pretty, you know, pretty serious um, endeavor because it was very much like what we do now in, in our triathlon world. But added on to that, taking care of an animal that's you know a much larger than my ten year old self when I started riding, um, and learning how to take care of of, of a large animal, um, which was part of the deal, you know. Mm -hmm. And so and you know so my and my my deal was I, I if I got my schoolwork done and did what I was supposed to do, then I could go to the barn. If I didn't do that, so I couldn't go to the barn. So my um, most of my middle school and even high school was all about getting, you know, getting things done so I could go do what I loved. Um, and I guess that's probably, you know, is, is laid the groundwork for, for where I am today. Just changed the thing, changed my, my activities a little bit. True. Now, are you, were you, uh, do you have any siblings? I do. I have a brother. I'm the oldest of three. I have a, a brother who lives here in Tallahassee and my sister is, um, she's seven years younger which, you know, that gap gets smaller and smaller, the older we get, we, but, um, she lives, she lives in Jackson Hall, Wyoming. So, um, I, I, I have the, the, um, it's such a hard thing to do to go visit my sister during the summertime in Jackson Hole. Yeah. Poor thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so when you talk about, okay, so McClay, Leon, I love asking people about high school mascots and college mascots now because I'm familiar with Leon High School I'm going to skip that one for you but I'm going to get to your college mascots because I don't know the answers to that but let me go back to the horse thing so if I remember so that's the tie into Red Hills right one of your family members helped I guess start that is that right right so my mom who never rode herself but was really involved as a parent as a you know as a as a horse show mom pony club mom um she really stayed involved even after i left riding she stayed involved and you know kept up with all of the the competition and she and another horse show mom sylvia oaks uh they they saw this beautiful piece of property that colin phipps had um and he built a cross country course out there and it wasn't being used and so they really so they, they really built on their experience as um, users of the sport of, of, of competitors parents and um, and turned that you know started year one it, it, into created a world-class uh, event that 
it's still going on today, 20 years, 22 or 20 some odd years later. Um, and it really is, you know, sort of the, the gold standard for, for the riders and, and the, 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 the ultimate people who come in and, um, and participate in the sport because they saw it from that angle. And, um, it's, it's, it's a great, great event. And it, it all goes back to my mom and Sylvia Oaks. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. It's a wonderful event. Brings a lot of people to Tallahassee from around, I know the country, maybe the world, right? Yeah. So in high school then, uh, you know, give me a couple words to describe you in, in high school. If I were to call one of your classmates and I said, tell me about Loran, what would they say? Um, they would say I was riding my horse a lot. I didn't, I, I wasn't as involved in the activities around school because I was at the barn. Um, but I, you know, Leon high school, how can you not be involved in the traditions and the, um, you know, the football games? It's interesting now as a, my son's about to graduate from Leon and he's a member of the band, the marching band, which is as a parent, I now realize how, how I think the marching band probably works harder than, than the football players. Uh, but to see it from that perspective as a parent has been really special these last couple of years um, to, to be back in the Leon family. Awesome. So at the same time, you know, so we can talk about the different lanes. I wanna get one more background question. So finishing at Leon High School, you, you you went to school. So tell us a little bit about your college experience. And when did you know, like, okay, I want to get a law degree. Like, I want to be an attorney. And, and tell me how, how that all happened. So I went to Randolph Megan Women's College, which is a um, was a was a woman's college in Lynchburg, Virginia, um, and I um, I took my horse to college. So I, that was that was kind of the, the the reason for the selection. I was able to to be involved in some equestrian activities up there, um, and then I I took a couple of years off and worked in in politics a little bit. Worked for for Bob Graham, who was running for the United States Senate his first time, and worked on that campaign. And but I always think I knew I wanted to to go to law school. In my, both my father and grandfather um, had practiced law together here in Tallahassee, and um, and I, I, I just that seemed like the the right path. Uh, so I went state of Virginia, went to Washington and Lee University, um, and you know about halfway through my college career, realized I, I, the horses it was it was a big responsibility to try to keep my academics and 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 horses and drive back and forth with a horse, and so that kind of um, kind of went by the wayside and, um, and then I, you know, sort of started my professional life as a lawyer and, and working in and around politics and government. Um, and that's kind of what, what, when I started and I traded in the horses for, um, for other types of exercise and activities. <laughs> yep. And, and being in DC and everything else, you know, different kind of business, certainly, uh, stayed up there, but all right, mascot, I got to get back to it. And then we're going to get into the career business lane. So Randolph, did they have a mascot in Washington Lee? What were they? I have no, well, the, the Washington Lee is the generals, okay. um, and the I, you know Randolph Macon is now Randolph College. I I uh, can't even tell you what we were because I was again the horse part is different than the actual you right. know the sports. So I did my own sure. thing. It was kind of independent. I think maybe it was the Wildcats or something. So we'll have to okay. check. We'll have to look it up. I will. I will. I'll, I'll definitely do that. And I'll get back to you. <laughs> so thank you again, just for my knowledge, even, you know, that background, because we don't always get that time to really dig and outside of, you know, uh, stalking or researching on LinkedIn or Facebook. I, I like to ask people about their, their upbringing a little bit. So thank you for sharing that. So let's get to our first lane, right? So we'll talk about business. So the time and energy that you spend in that lane today, but part of it, of course, are the, the past that you've traveled and, you know, based on what I know a little bit and, you know, your time in DC out of school, you know, you spent some time there working in different, different locations or different places, federal government or so, and, um, and eventually, of course, a career in the legislature here in Florida with some private practice and different things mixed in. So give us the short version of how you got to where you were and when you first ran for the Florida House, what was that, 2000, right? Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. So, um, and then, you know, talk a little bit about the, gosh, the energy that you put into it today on that business lane. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I, after law school, I, I actually moved to Miami for a couple of years and worked in a large firm um, and, it, and it really like in a library doing document production and, you know, what a, what a, a first or second year associate does in a big law firm. And it was not for me. Um, <laughs> 
And so I, I had gotten a little taste of government and politics, but working on the, with the Graham um, campaign and in his office. And so kind of got the bug and decided to, to go back and got involved in a presidential campaign and then ultimately went to work in DC for the Clinton um, administration and a couple of really cool jobs that really used my law degree, but it, you know, not being a lawyer. So the first was at work, the Department of Commerce working on um, the first ever White House conference on travel and tourism. So we did a, we did a, White House, a White House conference in every state that selected delegates to come to Washington and I to, to a big national conference. And I was the executive director of the whole thing. So I, between my, my boss, who was the undersecretary for travel and tourism and myself, we, we traveled to every state. We, you know, spoke at the conferences. And it's funny, before I, so, you know, was asked to do that job, I, I, as a lawyer, I was not comfortable speaking in public. And I almost didn't take the job because I thought, oh, I'm going to have to go give these speeches. But, I, you know, I, I, I took that leap. Um, and I, you know, I think everything sort of prepares you for the next thing. And I, um, I went around the country, really, it was a, it was a great experience. And we had this great, you know, White House conference on tourism. And then from there went to work um, at the Department of Housing and Urban Development on some inner city revitalization initiatives that, uh, that I think, you know, again, some of the work that I'm, my, the volunteer work that I've been doing for Whole Child Leon and now the South City Foundation, a lot of these things all kind of built into to what we're doing today. So, um, and, and I think all of that laid the groundwork for me to, when I came home and the seat became open in the Florida legislature, um, I decided to, to, you know, take a, take a, take a shot. And um, it was a five-way primary and we had a, back then we had a runoff. So I had three elections, um, my first time out of the box to get elected to the Florida house and, um, you know, and then served for eight years and took some time off and came back again. And now I'm really honored to be able to sort of um, put it all together in the Florida Senate. Yeah. And so what a path, right? Many leaps and putting yourself out there and being vulnerable, right? Um, you got to take risks for certain rewards and you have certainly put yourself out there. So congratulations on that path. And today as a senator, so your typical day, if you could, I mean, if there is one, because <laughs> I understand you go to a lot of different things and a lot of different meetings and there's session, there's non-session, there's campaigning, but your typical day would be something like what? Well, there's really not a typical day, but, but it, it, it does depend on whether we're in session or not. Like, but, but remember, so my, my, when I served in the house, my, my district was part of Leon County, not even the whole thing. And there are 120 members of the House, there's 40 senators. So I now have all of 11, soon to be 13 counties. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the last 48 hours, I've been to the I've toured a park in um, at the new park in Franklin County, the, the bluffs at St. Teresa. I, um, I went to a campaign fundraiser last night. I woke up and went to a county commission meeting in Gulf County. I, and I've toured um, a, a timber and cattle operation in, in Gulf County. So, you know, that was the Western part of the district. Some days I'll be sitting in front of a Zoom call all day long uh, on, you know, doing policy work. Other days I'll be working with, you know, with my, um, with my nonprofit hat on working uh, as the chair of the South City uh, Foundation, trying to raise money for a childcare center. A um, lot of, you know, or I'll have an office day where I'm either in the office or in a coffee shop somewhere meeting with constituents uh, to find out, you know, what to help them solve their problems and come up with policy ideas. So I think that may be, the reason I've stuck with this as long as I have, because there is no day, there is not a typical day. Um, <laughs> every day is different and every day brings something um, exciting and challenging and, uh, and, and I wouldn't have it any other way. So maybe a softball question for you here, but what, what's the hardest part? Is it the campaigning or doing the work? Oh, it's definitely, the, it's asking people for money, you know, yeah. because you can't do a campaign without money. And it, that's the worst people that, you know, that, that is, that is hard. Um, and, and, and the, the ugly campaigns, you, you, nobody that's watching this has, was spared the last campaign cycle, because I know there were every single person got 42 pieces of mail every single day and saw all the, the nastiness on television. And that's just, that's unfortunate as, you know, I, I've, 
got thick skin, I can handle it, but it just takes away from what we're, we're we we've got enough problems to, we got we need to pull together and solve the problems we don't need to be tearing each other down and i think that's playing so much into sort of this whole you know the people going into their corners so that's the part that's the tough part of it yeah no i agree and i and i think it has it makes people that are interested or good people that want to participate it keeps them on the sidelines a lot of times because they just don't want to they don't want to go through that they just don't want to be in the middle of that right, right. Who, so, who wants to put your family through that who wants to put you know even my even my parents got pulled into this last one um and that you know that's in my bike everything else you know right. yeah. um but it's it, and i do think and i think it just People, there's already so much distrust of of government and institutions generally. Uh, people need to trust their government. People need to understand that we, that there is a role, a very important role for government at every level, and that it's you know that we're that people are doing are we we putting ourselves out here to to try to you know keep people safe and make this make the make sure that our children generations beyond us have green spaces and places to run and swim and bike um that, you know that to me that's what this is about it's it's um and it's unfortunate that it becomes something else true true now thank you well again thank you for serving the citizens of the 11 soon to be 13 <laughs> counties of district three district three right right okay um, and I wish you continued success for all of our benefit, right? Uh, so thank you uh, for what you're doing there, Senator. Um, so that that's uh, mostly about the business career lane where you're at now, and thanks for the background there too. So I want to shift. You mentioned one piece that I'm going to go ahead and shift to the community lane because I, I understand, again, being around you um, for a number of years, just how involved you are in the community, both through the last 20, 30 years and today. So share with the audience a little bit about that community service lane, you know, what boards you're currently serving on or engaged in, uh, what other philanthropy, charitable things that, you know, take your time and energy, your talent, your treasure, all of that. Um, what can you say about that lane? So my big project right now and has been for about the past three or four years is the South City Foundation, which is a really exciting initiative in the south part of town. Um, you know, it's, it's a really challenged neighborhood. It's just one census track, um, but it's, you know, got a lot of a lot of challenges, a lot of help, you know, repeat teen pregnancies, a lot of um, low birth weight babies a lot of crime um, and a lot of kids. There's eight, there's 3000 residents, 800 children just in this one census track. And um, it's, a, you know, it has a rich history uh, and it is, um, it's, it's a, very exciting to be working with the residents and also with a, with a, um, a organization out of Atlanta called Purpose Built Communities that has successfully transformed communities um, around the country by focusing on three you know, investments simultaneously, focusing on a, a mixed income housing, uh, and on a, a A plus cradle to career education pipeline, and a well a mix of health and wellness and uh, recreation activities, recognizing that you can't focus on one, but all of these things need to, need to be invested in and addressed. And sort of the secret sauce is a is what they call a community quarterback organization that is a group of community leaders, some residents and, and some folks from across the community that every day are working to push this forward, um, open doors, find resources to, to um, for all these things to happen. We're very, very fortunate that um, at, we, we set out on this mission about the same time that the Tallahassee Housing Authority was um, looking to, to totally revitalize and revamp um, the Orange Avenue apartments, and so there's, you know, the housing authority was was underway with a developer that has been involved in these purpose built communities around the country. So it's really exciting. There's, you know, grounds breaking. Um, it's we're going to see a, a completely new um, neighborhood, and you know, our role is to make sure that the, the those who live there today still live there tomorrow, that we don't change, we change the fabric of the neighborhood without the people, without, without changing the people who live there. And, you know, really hoping to change the trajectory of the lives of those 800 children and doing everything we can to, uh, to support, to support the folks that, that live in, in that neighborhood. 
Awesome. Yeah, thank you. And, and I've seen, you know, again, being close to the nonprofit community, I remember, I think when I was at TMH Foundation, a lot of the board meetings at TMH, Steve Evans and Mark were in some of the early conversations around purpose built coming, right? right. Um, Steve Evans is a great connector for a lot of those types of things. And I think Christic Henry, if I recall, I think she's involved, right? She yes. Talk about somebody that, you know, puts some time and energy into the community. <laughs> she certainly does, right? Right. Um, so uh, thank you for, for sharing that. Um, and again, off the top of your head, those other, you know, whole child Leon, I mean, yeah, I hope, and, really, I've got to be able to say something about that. <laughs> you maybe had something to do with its success, you know? Well, and that was, you know, from day, when, when I uh, worked, one of my past political jobs was working with um, Governor Childs and, um, and he was such a believer in the first years of life, how critical, but really before we had the research that told us that he knew it. And now today we have, you know, reams and reams of evidence of how, how very important the first, really the first three years of life are. And so Whole Child Leon is about making sure that everyone in our community is focused on making sure that every single kid has that, that opportunity at that good start in life. And so the whole child really sort of opened the door to the, to the challenges in South City. And so it's sort of a, a, a little bit of a joint effort with um, whole child and South City working together with, you know, ultimately it's about those kids that live there and making sure that every kid in, in Leon County and every kid in Florida has the, has the opportunity to, to thrive. Um, whole child's been, been around and doing great things in the community. And I've, 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 you know, moved on, but, um, but very proud of the work and, and still stay connected. Yeah. And I will say, you know, because again, I've, I've looked at your website and everything, and it talks about and your interest and involvement at the legislative level, but I know also personally, you know, working with, with those with disabilities, working with kids and youth, and, you know, it's just always been something that you're, that's close to you. So, well, and I've, I tell the story a lot. I had a, when I, when I just had first gotten elected, I had a mom come visit me in my office. She had two kids on the autism spectrum and she brought them both in. And she said, I am not asking you for anything. I just want you to know that there are children falling through the cracks. My kids get what they need because I'm the squeaky wheel, but please look out for these families because their parents are so stretched. Um, and I, and I'd never forgot that. And, it, you know, I ended up there, there were, I, had, I was put in places to be able to to yeah. work with families and parents in the in the um, in the disability community, and then you know, ironically or or, or what you know, whatever whatever the um, however it happened, three years later, my my son was born with, uh, visually impaired, so I found myself as one of those parents. Um, yeah. But I had already really been involved with with other parents, and so kind of um, I don't know, it was it was a um, and it has always been an interesting, um, an interesting dynamic that led us there. But um, it's a, it's, it's a soft space place in my heart for sure. And then we're so lucky to have Allison Tant, who obviously she and I have a lot in common. And um, so we, you know, work together on these issues, and and so very important. Yeah, Independence Landing's coming, right? I'm very so excited about that. You reminded me at Rotary Youth Camp, which I'm sure you've heard of, you know, it's a summer camp that was in Gretna, I think it's in Defuniac now, but I chaired the board a couple of times as a Rotarian uh, for the camp. And I just, I remember this one parent telling me it was, it was great that their, their child had somewhere to go for that summer camp, but even more so for her, because yeah. she never got a break. And for that two weeks, she didn't have to do much. And it was just such a relief on her face. And when she came back in two weeks to pick up her son, I was there and she looked like a totally different person. She was re-energized. And, you know, so you, you gotta remember too, it's the kids and the parents and the things that they have to go through together just to make it, you know? So um, I applaud you for those efforts too. All right, so let's transition to another lane. Um, so we talked about work and business, talked a little bit about community. Let's talk about uh, fitness, active lifestyle, right? Um, this is where I probably see you the most <laughs> every Saturday or every other Saturday. But um, for the audience, let's talk about your time and energy in that lane today, um, but maybe give us a hint of how you got into it. So you got off the horse and at some point you got into the, the pool and the bike and running. Um, so let's talk about that for a little bit. 
Yeah, and it, I mean, and again, I, I was a late, late starter. And I think that may be why I'm able to keep doing it because I, you know, when I started, we had better technology than, you know, people, a lot of people my age have really bad knees and um, because they ran a lot when they were younger. I didn't do that for, for, good, for good or bad. I didn't do that. So, I mean, I, I've probably been running for 20, 22, 23 years. My first marathon was probably 22 years ago. Um, and I, but I, I, you know, go back to when I was living in Washington, not doing anything at that point, probably. And I, but I, I went out to the, and saw the finish line of the, of the Marine Corps marathon. And I remember thinking to myself, you know, I might want to do one of these one day and I, you know, tuck it away. And then, um, and I started, when I got back to Tallahassee, started running just a couple miles at a time. I lived in Benton Hills and I would, you know, slog through my th three miles and, um, <laughs> And, but and and then just little by little, uh, kept adding mileage and and found different running groups. I mean, my 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 first running group was the um, the well the Harry Blinney Track Club, who is like you know that's um, Bob Pierce, uh, Bubba, and my husband, who we weren't married at the time. We met we met through running. Um, Connie Clark was involved with that group because it was a bunch of lawyers from Osley. Right. Um, and um, and then con and then we kind of moved to the early girls, which was bon Bonnie Wright and mm -hmm. Randy Hanna and um, uh, Joy and Jackie McDaniel. I mean, you know, and Tom Perkins and yeah. Tom McAfee and um, Judy Chin. And we would, you know, we would meet Tuesdays and Thursday morning at five thirty, and we had a route, and we did that for years. Um, and then, you know, so and and all of us have at various times in our careers done marathons together and then then I got you know at some point I um I did that Freedom Springs triathlon I think so many people that's their first one and um I did it on a you know an old clunker bike but I got a medal you know I got third place in my age group or something and I was hooked forever um and I think that's probably a lot of people's story um mm -hmm. and I and my next race from that was a I, I went from Freedom Springs in July of whatever year that was. And then I, the next thing I did was um, Gulf Coast, a half Ironman, <laughs> didn't yeah. do anything in between. And I don't think I changed, I, maybe I got, I don't even think I got a better bike. You know, I didn't know anything about what I was doing. Um, but it's, a, you know, triathlon, it's such a great sport and it's such a great equalizer as, as is running. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what your job is, how much money you make, or, you know, we, if everybody's the same when you get out there on the course and every, in this community, particularly, everyone is so supportive of each other and sure there's competition. Um, and I, I know you're, you know, people that are fast like you, Mickey, you have to be competitive. Um, but but even even the most competitive, we, we all want each other to succeed. And I think, you know, with so much of my life is cutthroat in other places. This is a, it's, it's a nice, um, a, a really nice space for me uh, to spend time and, you know, to, to clear my head and be able to 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 go on and do the other things in my life. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, swimming, cycling, and running—you know, trying to fit them all in. Again, it's a different lane. I mean, on average, are you doing five to seven? I mean, you've been doing it long enough where your body's like it's it's there, right? But still, you got to maintain. So, are you doing five to ten ten hours a week? Is that a good number to say, training wise, at least? That's I probably should have looked at my Garmin. I could tell you exactly, but um, <laughs> but I do. I try to do two of each discipline per week you okay. know two, two runs two bikes and you some and and try you know try to do three of at least one so um but definitely at least an hour a day probably more like two hours a day um early in the morning like most of us um and that's you know, but it, you're right my body's kind of used to it my body doesn't know what to do if I don't do it though I mean I, I think I you're probably the same way if I have days off I get that's when I get aches and pains not when I'm running it's crazy um yeah. I'm in a different mood when you know post marathon when I need to take time off it's so hard for me to say I go what am I doing I I need to eat I need to do something <laughs> because my body wants to to go run but yeah, I'm very much the rookie, as you know, in, in the triathlon stuff, and um, I'm still trying to figure out that whole swim thing and and making time for the bike. Um, but I get to make up a little bit on the run, so that's <laughs> keeping me it's keeping me interested, you know. Uh, but it is a great community, and uh, but like anything else, it requires 
to practice and preparation. You know, you, you, you have to. It, you can't really show up on triathlon day or race day or whatever day and just expect to be able to swim a half a mile or two miles. Um, you are an Ironman. So how many, one, five, 10, how many have you done the full? Four. Four. Four? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, it's on my bucket list. I don't know if I'll get there, but we'll. You'll get there. You'll get there. And I, you know, I did, I did my first one 2007. I thought that was it, you know, and then I um, actually was inspired by Bonnie and Lonnie when they, for, I think for their 60th birthday, maybe they did Chattanooga together. As, and, um, and I'm like, you know what, if she can do that, I can do it too. So I went back and did Chattanooga. Um, and then Kelly Dillon and a group of us did um, Maryland together. And then I just, just had another one in me. So I just did, I just did um, Florida last year. Okay. And, um, it was, uh, and you know, I, it, it is a, and I think I still have another one because I had, a, it was, I had a great race. And so it's, it's, it's always scary when you, when the next day you think I can do this again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I go through that a lot with the marathon. So you know, the area like, ah, and then, okay, which one am I going to sign up for next? Right. But, um, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you out there, uh, at our next, whatever it is, um, keep up the good work. And I agree. I think you and I both, we started later in life, like running wise, um, competitively because you are a competitor uh, you do compete obviously and and do well but I'm glad I didn't run from you know high school to my 30s because it probably saved my knees it really did I, I think that's right and I, you know again the, the 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 just the apparel the gear the shoes are so much better than even when I started running you know, I've, I've got those magic shoes, those, those Nikes that are just, I mean, they're fast and they make me faster and, and they don't, my feet don't hurt. So, right. I mean, the, the, those are, we're, there's been many years of, of having clunky shoes and bikes and, and, um, the, you know, the, the now, gear and stuff does matter. Yeah. Now the shoes have carbon fiber. Next thing you know, they're going to have pogo sticks in the bottom of it. <laughs> boy, 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 you know, um, all right. So let's transition to another lane. So we've, we've got three down. I want to go and transition to the family lane, right? Because again, I know well having a family too that that requires time and energy and uh, and effort too. So share what you're willing to share. You know about the the hobbies, the time, the things that you do as a family. I talked about Bill and, and Will and the rest of your family. I forget your other son's name. I forgot. I'm sorry, but. Yeah. Yeah, tell us so, uh, a little bit about what you want to share there about the family lane. Yeah, so um, so Will is our is um, you know my only child, and, and Bill has a um, he has an older stepbrother, um, half brother John Holloman, who's a doc doctor in New York. Um, and we during COVID, some of the um, time he came and was here, it was great to have him here. Um, but Will is going about to graduate from Leon High School, um, and I most people know he had a really um, precarious start in life. He was born uh, at 22 weeks gestation, weighing a little bit over a pound. Um, the smallest baby to live, to survive at that time, 19 years ago. And um, so he, a lot, there were a lot of people, a lot of prayers a lot that, that got us through those scary months and into a year. He was in the hospital for four months um, and then had all types of surgery. And really his only lingering challenge is he's visually impaired. So um so he's you know that that's been my life and um and I it, it does it takes a village and there's been a lot of people in this village who have surrounded us with with support um including our running community you know will he I remember the, just you know taking him um to the track and doing the you know the the uh, the, the kids smile and doing all those things and not knowing if he was ever going to be able to do that and realizing wow you know on a track he can he can run and he can do this and then um, in middle school, he actually ran cross country. And I'll tell you, that was the scariest thing in my life. Um, when they, when the gun goes off and there's all, I didn't, you know, I didn't realize they all start together in this mass start and send them out at the, at the, um, at Phipps, um, and not knowing if I was ever going to see him again. Um, sure. but he, you know, he, and he, he ran 
three of the years of, of high school. Um, so, you know, it run, and, and my, again, I'm, I mentioned, I met my husband, Bill, when we were, um, when we were back in the early, early days of running, he, he's not still running, but he does get out and walk still. And, um, but they have been, um, you know, I couldn't do what I do in all of these lanes if it weren't for the immeasurable support from both Bill and Will. I, I think about when he was, when Will was a kid and I, every Saturday morning, I'm sure the same is for you, you come home and you're, they're still sleeping and I'm sweaty. And I, and I guess that, that's just all they know. Like, ev- doesn't everybody's parents race on Saturday mornings? Isn't that what everybody does? No, you know? no. <laughs> um, and I, you know, and I think, um, back to the, my first marathons and my first, you know, my first Ironman and Bill, Bill and Will were, you know, certainly my first Ironman, um, it was after Will was born. So they were there cheering me on and, um, and they're there cheering me on at every, every step of the way. So, um, we, we try to do Bill and that Bill does have a gravel, we, we have gravel bikes. So I'm trying to get him, um, back on the, back on the bike and, um, hoping that that's gonna, um, it took me a while to, 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 to take that step to go from our road bike to a gravel bike, but I'm starting to really like it. So that's something, you know, I hope that we can keep doing together. And, um, you know, we don't, Will's a musician, so um, excited to see what his future is going to hold. Um, he, he's a drummer and does a lot of electronic music. And I think, um, I think he'll end up somewhere. I think you'll see his name somewhere. He's, he's really, he's really, that that's his passion. And um, I think it's going to take him somewhere. So I got to, I'm, I'm going to sit and push him in whatever way that I can to, to be successful. Um, pretty special kid. Yes, he is. Yeah. Thank you. And Bill, so uh, attorney as well, right? Or An attorney and has had his own practice, um, uh, and in intellectual property, uh, patents, trademarks, copyrights, and I'm on the shingle. So I do a little bit of work with him. Um, but he's been on his own for a while and do and, and loving that work. And, um, you know, it, it's, it, it, thankfully without being in a big firm, he has the flexibility to help me, you know, to fill in when I, when I can't do. And, um, and we, we have a, a, a great partnership, um, at just, you know, being a political spouse is not easy. Um, and, and I, you know, the first time around he did every single thing with me and, and, and now, um, I only make him go to the things that he wants to go to because <laughs> it's hard to stand in a room and have me have to enter, you know, so he, but he's a, a, just a fantastic partner in all, all of these, um, in all of these endeavors and um, couldn't, couldn't do any of this without yeah. the support of them. And my parents who live here as well, um, they're, they're both in their eighties and doing well and very active and um, very active in Will's life. And, um, and, and they, you know, they, I couldn't do it without all of that. All of them. Yeah. And, you know, I think back from Will's, you said about to graduate from high school, right? Yep. And, you know, again, I've been here for 25 years now. So, and, and I've seen him grow up like a lot of people. And I don't, I don't know that I knew in the beginning how challenging it was. I don't think I, I knew that part of the story. Um, but just to be able to watch him grow up and, you know, and now he's, He's on the cusp of being a musician, like, you know, <laughs> maybe he'll he'll be on the award shows one day or something, but um, just happy for y'all, you know, to see that and um, the family unit that you are, because I do see it. I have seen it. Um, so thank you for sharing some personal thoughts there. So let's, all right, so we got business, we got community, we got fitness, we got family, again, um, the many lanes of work and life. And so now I'm going to give you an opportunity, uh, Loran, just to kind of share, you know, what are those successful behaviors um, that have allowed you to, to do these things? And I know work, work-life work integration, I use that word instead of balance, because I just don't think there is really a balance. There's never, it's always changing. So I, I like to say, how do you get them to integrate <laughs> where you can still be successful to a relative degree? And um, maybe no formula, you know, not everything maybe you suggest works for every person, but by golly, you've proven it's possible. So uh, when it comes to running more of life than life running you, what are some of your secrets that you can share? Well, I think the first thing is, I mean, I, you have, you have to be able to compartmentalize, you know, like turn it on and turn it off. Like, and that is, it, it's a skill. It take, I, I have not always been able to do that. Um, 
but I think that being able to like when I'm in my extra when I'm in my exercise mode, I'm that's what I'm doing. And yes, I have to have my phone with me sometimes, and I have to look at the phone if it if my if I get a text. But but I but I'm when I'm in that moment, that's what I'm doing. When I'm in and I'm and I've gotten better at when I'm in, in I'm doing my I'm in my computer now and I'm working on my work and I'm not going to get distracted by something. I'm not going to go look at a race registration. I'm going to focus on this you know this policy issue right now and the you know I'm going to get these emails answered and then I can once I get that done we can move on to the next thing. Um, and but but being able to shift gears almost instantaneously from one to another, from family to work, to community bu business, to, um, to, you know, what makes you happy is, um, is important. And I think it's an acquired skill. Um, secondly, uh, yoga is, I mean, made, has made a huge, and maybe that's why I'm able to do that. Maybe it's made a huge difference. I started yoga maybe, maybe 10, 12 years ago. And I am, have that type of mind that I never thought I would be able to do it. I never thought I'd be able to still my mind. Um, right. But but being able to still my mind has, has, you know, given me an ability to do other things. And so I, you know, if, if you're someone out there who is questions your ability to, to slow it all down, give it a try because it, it, it again, was not overnight. Um, but it is now something that I, I try to practice daily, even if it's five minutes, just to just have that moment. And I think that really has kept me mentally strong and it's kept me physically strong. You know, just the, I mean, when you talk about balance, the actual balance that it requires, the actual physical exertion of being still. Um, sometimes I, you can, you know, work yourself into a sweat sitting still by trying to move muscles. So I, I'm a firm believer in yoga. Um, and I think, you know, just f for me, and I have the luxury of being able to do this, but like when you're looking at your week, um, it may not be the same time every day that you have to, to get that hour in, but, you know, but, but make it a priority to fit, fit it in where you can. And again, that's going to be different for everybody else. I mean, every, if you have young children and you have, you know, it's difficult, but I, but I'm, you know, the way that it, I am able to make it work is that I, as I said, I have a supportive family and, and, and it goes both ways. I, I, they support me and then I, but you have to be, you have to, you know, you have to give that back. Um, and so, I, you know, I, I think that it's every, everyone in it, and it's, it's changed over time, but I've, I've sort of, at this point, I've got the system down. I look at my week. I know, I know what, I need to get in and I try to make it work and sometimes and, and try not to be too disappointed if something comes up and you can't do it. I mean, that, and that is, that's a hard, that's the hard part for me because I, it, as you said earlier, it shifts my mood. If I, if I waited to do my workout into the afternoon and then I had a meeting come up and I'm not able to do it, <laughs> it it's hard not to be really bummed out by that. Yeah. which is why I try to get it done in the morning so that that doesn't happen. <laughs> it doesn't. And I, I think just, you know, just recognizing, um, you know, the other part of this is all, all through all the training, marathon, Ironman, all that is recognizing that it's all, so much of this is out of our hands. You know, you have a mechanical on your bike in an Ironman, it's not your fault and there's nothing you can do about it. And you have to be you have to be prepared for all of that and be mentally prepared for, and it's not, you know, it's not get, not giving up. It's just recognizing that there's, there is not, we're not completely in control. Um, but I often laugh that the reason I relish and love my, my triathlon world so much is because it is the only time part of my life that I feel like I can have control over, um, you know, I, I do, I can, I can control how many miles I run and when I do it and all that stuff. So, um, I, you know, I can't necessarily control when we have session or how many people need to meet with me. So, um, I try to compartmentalize to get those things done on my schedule and, um, and keep my brain and body healthy. Okay. Thank you. Those are some great tips. And I'm going to try to regurgitate a few of them, right, for, for my, for my uh, education, but also the audience again. So um, compartmentalize. I heard that, right? Um, being able to shift gears. I love the way you put that. Being able to shift gears from different lanes to lanes and being okay with it and focusing and not let them cross over each other. 
dedicate the focus, but yet try to be still. Find some time for being still, even though it may exert some energy like yoga, but be still and be, have peace of mind at some time um, for your mental and physical health. I like that as well. Um, I heard prioritizing and planning and reciprocating, right? So the system, when you said, I got the system down now, and it's just a matter of uh, it being relative to the individual, but the better you can prioritize and plan these things out and then reciprocate, it'll more work out for you in that regard. Um, is that a pretty good summation of most of it there? I think you said it better than I did. So that was great. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on my listening skills all the time. I, I still got a long way to go, but um, but no, I, I think those are great. And I, I love to borrow those phrases of things like shift the gears, right? Because that is a lot of what we do. And um, sometimes those gears, because you can't control that bike, right? You get a mechanical sometimes and a gear breaks down and be okay with it. That's the other piece you said too. I just reminded you know, sometimes we don't get what we want and, you know, it doesn't work out. Don't let that defeat you. Get back on the horse. Oh, there you go. Horse reference. Or get back on track. Oh, running reference. Sorry, I've got to stop this. Yeah, but um, but I hear you. Thank you again for for uh, your advice and for participating in, in this episode of Run Life today, Lorraine. It was good to see you. Thank you so much. It was great, Mickey. Thank you very much. And for our audience, look for this episode soon at runlifetoday.org. Season two, episode three coming your way soon. Y'all take care. Thank you. Bye.